he didn't feel any pain. But now he does. Speak up, Arturo. The whole class needs to hear you. Oh no, Artie again. My poor boy. <laughs> Uh, you watch them both die a painful and horrible death, and that's how this game ends. It's just everybody dies. If that was the no. case, then this would just suck. But I, I yeah. have hope that there's a good ending here. This is just, this is like the 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 uh, the low point of the story. I think. Yeah, you know, like, makes sense. Things are going to get better after this. I think. Hopefully, hopefully. Unless the big payoff is um, Brian getting just fantastically murdered getting what's coming to him somehow oh definitely like that's a good payoff and a good chunk of rots and echo so i would love that payoff here what's up yeah, that that, that would be an extreme wow. <laughs> Do does anybody know what year this came out uh this is still in progress it's taking place in 2020 um but it was okay. actually just released starting i believe it was june of 2021 it's really giving me um, black phone vibes um, that I will not elaborate on so people can watch the movie. Uh, but yeah, it is very interesting. And I think, wasn't it kind of established that he, uh, that Brian has like a lung condition or something? I know he's not in the best health. Mm, you're talking about Cameron, aren't you? No, the bear, the big bear. No, he does not have a lung condition. Brian just is in is a meth head who uh, sells uh, a whole bunch of drugs to other meth heads in town. Okay, so it's just he's a meth... Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought he's it was, okay. also a serial killer who basically uh, uses power trips over his victims. Right. He likes to see them suffer. Yeah, but I'm, I could see some sort of, like, poetic thing where he has a bet, where he has, like, a drug overdose, or some, like, some complication from drugs causes a health condition to affect him. That could be interesting. I do know, though, for when it comes to Echo, um, yeah. in there, for the routes where Ryan does get his yeah. comeuppance, he yeah. gets a violent, brutal death, and he yeah. deserves well, it. I, I'll say this, because do you see a clock slung in his future? Because I'd like to! I mean, I think I'll be all <laughs> Would you like to? Yeah. <laughs> you... Alright, whenever you're ready, narrator. Okay. Have you ever heard the sound of a lung collapsing? Would you like to? No, I would no, not. No, no. <laughs> what if it was Brian's? Uh, that's tempting, but... I, 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 I'm not sure if I would even for that, no. <laughs> He's in front of 20 curious, attentive eyes, while his paws shake, almost making his papers rattle. He's had less than a year to learn a new language, and now they expect him to give an entire book report? He'd given anything to be in this room, gaming on his brand new PlayStation 2. But first, he has to figure out how to survive these next five minutes. He's playing his PlayStation 4 in his dorm room when Maria walks in. Matt, you still here? Yeah. Arturo's up. Hey. Oh, <laughs> hang on. Sorry. Hey, hey, beautiful. You able to get some sleep? He doesn't look. He doesn't look up from his game. Holy shit! Maria has lines. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Girls can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, actually, hold up. No, is this the first time a girl has spoken, actually? I think in, in, game, I think, yeah. I think in Arches, yeah. Wow. Because <laughs> I know okay. like, the, the girl from high school who drowned the lake, she didn't actually Wait. say anything. Does the mother ever speak in the no, story? No, she's only referred to. Okay. And Lupita like is referred to, like... Oh, no, Lupita doesn't speak either. She just screams in, like, the one vision. This mm. is literally the first time a girl has spoken anyone with two X chromosomes. Oh my gosh. My gosh. No. Uh, do you want me to voice Maria? <laughs> no, let's wake up Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it was all Sam. Be like, hey, Sam. 
<laughs> but no, for now, you can be Maria if you want to. Okay. Or, All if right. you would rather, you could have someone else tag in. Yeah. No, um, I think we just uh, have Hannah from this point forward just read the rest of the game, no matter what character <laughs> it is. <laughs> The next morning, I'm just like, uh, what is my, my voice? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I can voice Maria for now. Okay. Oh, you sh- Is that supposed to be should? I think- or, sh- uh, No, no, I think she's like- I think she's brushing her teeth right now. See, like, oh. you show no my overflow toe. Oh, okay. Like, I think she's got something that she's, like, messing around with her, like, oh, okay, teeth gotcha. or something, like, like by brushing. Right. Oh. You should know my overthrow toe. That makes him look up. Huh? She looks confused, frustrated. Born and sworn and to mourn and forlorn. He puts down the controller and stands up. Baby, what? Arturo st- installs a lock on the medicine cabinet. He helps her eat healthy. He helps make sure she goes to bed at the right time. Whenever she feels a mood swing approaching, high or low, they prepare together. Oh. Maria once cried and told him that she wasn't worth it, that he should find someone that isn't an unpredictable mess. He told her she was definitely worth it, and that they just need to be prepared. Oh, Artie, no! Ah! Arturo opens his eyes and then cringes at the ache in his head. Not an ache, but an explosion ripping through his skull, his brains, and down his spine. It hurts so much that he lets out a sound that's a half moan, half scream. This time, it seems to take even longer for him to understand where and when he is. He had been moving as fast as he could without actually running or jogging, since he isn't even capable of doing that. He guessed he had probably made it two miles away from Echo, so five more to go. He had just been thinking about how he was walking almost exactly like his grandfather did after his stroke, and Arturo had thought, now we'll actually have something to bond over before it happened. A dizzy spell, unlike all the others, made him stumble, like he was looking over the edge of a cliff. Then, anxiety, like he'd never known before, overcame him. Making his heart beat so fast, Arturo was convinced it was going to explode. He got on his knees, started praying for help, And then, now he's here, on the ground, his nose and forehead stinging from where it slammed into the asphalt, and the rest of his body just aches. He'd had a seizure, and though he'd never had one before, he knows that's what happened. At least he was on his knees, so his face didn't have far to fall. Still, he's left feeling so exhausted, so defeated, that he just wants to lay there. He'd been in a half-dream state, completely confused as he stared around him, memories flicking through his mind like a viewmaster. An hour had passed, maybe two, before he finally understood what his situation was again wants to go back to that confused state, pretend it's a dream. But now he's crying, because now is he going to take care of Maria if he can barely walk, barely talk? She's good at taking care of herself, but he needs to be there 
just in case. He needs to live, and he needs to get better. And while he's glad to be out of Echo, he knows Cameron is still there. And if Devin is gone too, he knows the bear would only want him to save Cameron. Get up, Arturo. All of your friends need you. Eventually, he slowly sits up, his paws shaking so badly. He's worried he's having another seizure, but eventually, he steadies himself. He needs to keep moving. So, with a deep, shuddering breath, Arturo starts to carefully get up, and that's when he sees it. Oh, fucking really? Again? No! Uh -huh. Oh, no. Hardy, no. Fuck. Oh, Why? Oh, Why? Oh, not so... this. Not the specter of death and hatred. Okay, so, so I'm going to point this out to you guys. Um, I know what Th this, this is. is. This is this is something that does show up in Echo. Oh, yeah. Is this the thing that they were referring to in the last video yeah. that we did? Mm -hmm. yep. And I, I need to know what color is this because my I have color change on my screen. It's black. Pale. It, it's uh, pale. It's... Is it white? Uh, that's it what could it be like. white. Is it uh, white it or is it be. red? It is not red. Okay, it's, it's the white one. Oh, it, the white one. So there's a distinction. There are two huh. of them. There's the white one and the red one. Okay, I uh, didn't know that before. This is but some, all this right. some pyramid head shit. I'm going to give you guys that small spoiler. Mm -hmm. There are two of them. There's the white socket creature and the red socket creature. I'm sorry okay. I had to give you that spoiler, but... I mean, it oh, means it nothing to it, it. means nothing to us beyond that. All I'm going to say is that in Echo, we get an explanation for the red socket creature. The white socket creature was never explained. Ooh. So people suspected that we might learn about what the white socket creature actually was in Arches, oh, and gosh. I was hoping oh, that wasn't going no. to be the case. Or we're already here. Oh no. Crap. Oh yeah, poor uh, Artie. Everything's uh, going wrong for him. It stares, and Arturo just stares back silently. In that moment, he's sure that he actually did die. That what he assumed was a seizure was really just the end. And now this thing, this embodiment of death, is here to take him. Instead of moving toward him, though, or really acknowledging him in any way, doesn't move at all. Arturo notices something out of the corner of his eye, and though it's distant, he sees lights. Headlights. Multiple headlights moving in both directions on the landscape. The highway. This thing's a deer on the highway. <laughs> That's terrible. Arturo looks back. But it's gone. With nothing else to do, he starts to get up. He's sure that he didn't see those lights before he collapsed, but a lot of memory is missing. Several patches between when he was shot and now are unaccounted for. What he just saw is probably product of is probably product A of his falling brain or failing brain. I mean there's bound to be typos here and there. Uh so wordlessly he walks in his wide stance with his arms swinging awkwardly, knowing that nothing will be the same again. Okay, good, the white socket creature didn't kill Artie. In fact, it might have helped him. It might have. I was going to say, maybe actually give him, like, a push. I'm going to actually remind you guys of something. If I am remembering correctly, we actually did see the white socket creature, and it did help at one point. Because I'm Which... going... If I remember Oh, it got, um... Uh... When their car crashed. 
Uh, it like got it, him out of the water. So no, it did not. It did not okay. do that. Um, that is the white sock creature, if I remember correctly. Maybe it was the red one. I don't remember which one did that. Whichever one that one was, though, that one chucked them into the lake. Yeah, no, that oh, one okay. did. What I do remember, though, is that the end of Leo's route, when Brian drags Chase into the mines, at one point, Chase asks for help, and he asks the player oh. for help. And then, out of nowhere, the white socket creature comes and fucks Brian up hard. That's right, I forgot about that. Remember, there are, like I said, there are a couple routes where Brian dies, that's one of them. And he does not die peacefully. The white socket creature might be related to all the people that have been harmed by Brian. Yeah, that's that's the suspect that's the suspicion on that. Like I said, we don't know exactly what the white socket creature is, but that's the suspicion. At least. Well, and also, it like, this, Dan, like they're made of trauma. It seemed like Maria. We actually have an explanation for the red socket creature. I just don't want to tell you guys that because that's a spoiler for one. Yeah, two so, so I want to make sure I didn't miss this. Maria is Artie's former lover fiance. of some no, sort. It's, it's his current fiance. fiance. Isn't she dead? No, no, she's alive. No, no, no. Different person is dead. Um, what was her name? Lupita is dead. Lupita is dead. Mm-hmm. Someone is pushing Artie along. Yeah, Artie is definitely getting some help. I think. I think something i i honestly think that the white sock creature might have actually moved Artie because remember it was a five mile walk to the highway he collapsed yeah. two miles mm-hmm. in and wakes up with the headlights in the distance and that white sock yeah. creature just kind of looking at him for a little bit before it vanishes yeah white sock creature good guy is what we're saying he, like, potentially he doesn't, I don't know if he gives a good guy, but it sounds like the like my guess is that the socket creatures are like an accumulation of trauma or something like that. I I know so exactly what the red one is. I don't know what the white one is. You'll have to message me later. But this is my guess: is they're like an accumulation of trauma, um, which makes them chaotic. So that could be like the white one is victims of Brian. It's kind of like an egregore, where it's like a psychic manifestation of. Trauma, so like the red one could be trauma from all the people who do horrible things when they get go crazy from from Echo, and these could be like the victims of Brian. So they're more directed because they're angry with Brian. <laughs> but it sounds like it's got Maria, it's got some some of Maria in it as well, maybe. But it's kind of like it's like a collection. Well, it doesn't have anything with Maria. Maria is still alive and well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but so I I think like. I don't think it has, like, a full consciousness so much as it has, like, a collection of instincts. Mm. But, not conscious, but it, 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 it's just malice. Right. Well, I mean, I think no it's consciousness, tra- yeah, it's just trauma, malice-ness. You know, it's, it's trauma and malice and frustration, you know, like, trauma, frustration, malice. Thing, you know, all the bad feelings that happen when bad things happen to you. It is hurt people hurt people. You know when they talk about how hurt people hurt people? That's hurt people. I, I will say, That's hurt people right there. I will say probably by the by the end of November or December, you guys will know more about what's going on in Echo as a whole. And we could probably yeah. discuss this more when Build 7 rolls around, I bet. Mm-hmm. Okay. When All right. Are you, narrator? Um, you guys, I'm going to say goodnight, and I'm, right. well, goodnight to you. I'm going to get on some VR chat and say hello to some people. So bye. All right, I'm bye. Later once we're done. So have a good night, Andrew. Yeah. Bye. When do bye. you, when do you be done? Uh, once we finish the build, which most likely is probably going to be after, like, either this scene or the next one. Mm. Okay. okay. Later. Yeah. Night. Good night. After telling Brian everything he can remember, the bear seems satisfied. Did you try and talk to him? Uh, no. I didn't have time. Brian waves away the coyote's excuse. Just do it next time. I will interrupt you. Cameron wants to tell the bear that he's not even sure he can talk to them. Because after all this time, he's starting to think that he shouldn't even be able to. He can see what's happened in the past, 
maybe even see what might happen in the future, but that's it. He only sees a record, but if they acknowledge him, communicate with him, then that's something that he doesn't want anything to do with. Devon had said that he doesn't believe in demons, but that's what Cameron thinks they are. All of these unexplainable forces that haunt and torment the living, it's all demons. Brian disappears again, and because he doesn't grab the coyote, Cameron assumes he isn't meant to follow him. A minute or two later, Cameron hears a loud snorting sound, and he flinches. And then it happens again. Cameron looks over to see Brian leaning over the counter, head low. Combined with the sound and posture, the coyote knows that the bear is definitely snorting something. He'd been in a similar position many times in his past. Either way, he's not about to ask the bear what he's snorting. He can only hope that it's something that knocks Brian out, or at least slows him down. After sniffing and stabbing in his nostrils, the bear returns to Cameron's side. Well, let's go outside to a spot that I think you'll get better. Perception, whatever. Oh no, Whitey, why do you do this? I just realized what the voice sounds like to me. Whitey, why? <laughs> we gave you all those buttons, or all those patches. <laughs> Before Cameron can fully comprehend what Brian just said, he finds himself being forced over the huge bear's shoulder before being lifted in a fireman's carry. Cameron closes his eyes, clutching into the fur of Brian's back as the bear lumbers heavily around, listening to the sounds of a screen door swinging open and shut. He can sense that they're outside, the air warm from the lingering heat of the day. Then, he finds his feet coming into contact with the ground. Cameron looks at his surroundings while Brian ambles around five feet away, kicking at the dirt and foliage. It's twilight now, at least as far as Cameron can tell. Excuse me. The eerie, ominous red hasn't gone away, even though they're well past sunset. The first time he tried shrooms, colors did change, but in the sense that they became more vibrant and saturated. The forest looks just like it did when he had the vision about the static entity. He was with Dev then. Alright, I'm just gonna pause the recording just to be safe because I realized that it's probably been running for an hour or something.